Movies and musicals go together like, well, rama lama lama ka ding a ding -de dong Ever since sound was introduced to film, audiences have been captivated by song and dance on screen. For nearly 100 years, musicals have made for fantastic films, giving audiences those big production numbers, those emotional and literal high notes, the razzle-dazzle, and all of that jazz. The best movie musicals are, to quote Willy Wonka, works of pure imagination. And now the great pop culture debate wants to decide, what is the best movie musical of all time? I'm known for number 17, The Spread Eagle. I'm your host, Eric Resniak, and please help me welcome my panelists for tonight's show. In sleep he sang to me, in dreams he came. It's Bob Erlenbeck. That's not the only place I came. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need a spoonful of sugar to go down. It's Dan Howell. Ah, uh, I got my tap shoes ready, my jazz hands are good to go, and I'm ready to talk about musicals. And it's the pelvic thrust that really drives her insane. It's Kate Reculia. Oh, let's do the time warp again. 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 <laughs> Before we get to the debates, let's go over how this works. We put up an open poll with 150 of the most notable movie musicals of all time. For this episode, we're focusing on musicals that had a theatrical release in the United States. So we're not including musicals released directly to streaming, st streaming services. That's why you won't find Hamilton or The Prom. The films must have had at least two musical numbers and be primarily live action. We also excluded biopics about musicians. So if that seems limiting to you, let me assure you, we still had hundreds, literally, that qualified. And it also means that you can look forward to future episodes discussing the best television musicals, best animated musical film, and best musical biopic. There is a method for our madness, and that is to cheat you out of even more of your listening hours, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a staggering 660 people took the survey. Far more on what happened there and how it dramatically impacted the seatings on our bracket. Check out the warm-up to this episode over on our Patreon. We took the top 32 vote-getters, ranked them by popularity, and assigned them to a bracket. Now we argue it about it and insult each other all for your amusement. We're also doing things a little bit differently for season three onward because you demanded it. Instead of two part episodes, we're taking it down to just one main episode per topic where we'll be starting with the Sweet 16 and now going down to the ultimate winner. Want to hear how we winnowed things down from the top 32? Become a Patreon supporter and listen to the Patreon exclusive warm ups where we work through round one. By the way, you can play along at home. Head to greatpopculturedebate.com, click on polls and brackets, where you can find the listener bracket for this and every episode of the podcast. Make a copy for yourself. That part is important. Actually, make a copy. I can't get the uh, in the middle of my day Gmail accounts. Blank and so wants to open a, uh, wants to make changes. Uh, then fill it out with your own picks to see how they match up with our panels. So with that being said, let's move right on to the debates. First up, it's ultimate number one seed Chicago going up against five seed Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The 1970s version starring Gene Wilder, of course. The panel is currently unanimous in favor of Chicago advancing, but I would like to take a moment to pay tribute to what I consider to be one of the most magical musicals of all time, and I wanted to see if anybody on the panel wanted to say what they love about Willy Wonka. Oh, I love that horrifying thing in the tunnel with the chicken mm -hmm. getting its head cut off. Oh, I really still, do. <laughs> as a child, it terrified me. As an adult, it terrified me. Mm -hmm. It's just wild. And there's something about the spirit of that movie that I feel it's not super faithful to the doll novel um, in the way that I think the Tim Burton one later, like on the surface tries to be, except for the whole backstory thing. Um, but it's just, it has this wild kind of dangerous energy that is very doll. Um, and also Gene Wilder. God. Gene Wilder, man. Like uh, I once read a piece that was talking about how Gene Wilder's version of Willy Wonka in particular is essentially Satan in that he offers yes. people good or evil oh, yeah. and they always choose evil for the most part. Um, and that really spoke to me. And I think that is very much in line with Roald Dahl and his whole moralistic children's novels, which are really dark, but very interesting. Um, what I love about this movie. So I showed this movie to my niece when she was like six and she had already watched the remake by Tim Burton. And so we're watching it and she turns to me after a half an hour, because if you'll remember in this version, there's an extended opening section that's in the slums and there's mm -hmm. cheer up Charlie and there's a lot of depressing old people in beds. And she turns to me and she says, you know, in my version, they actually go to a chocolate factory. And I was like, oh, Okay, yeah. Shade. Damn. But, but she was savage even when she was like six. But <laughs> then they get inside the thing and she was completely into it. And I remember one of my all-time proudest moments as an uncle is when we get to the absolutely 
take a drink iconic scene with Veruca and I want it now and the golden geese she gets up on the scale and as soon as she stands up there mm-hmm. my niece says she's a bad egg and then that's exactly what it says <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, down. but I mean <laughs> you can't go wrong with that movie it is I've watched it I don't even know how many times every time I start watching it I go all the way through the end yeah the kids are all brilliantly classed mm-hmm. like even down to uh little um what's his face the the, the German one why can I not Augustus, Augustus, Augustus Gloop Augustus Gloop oh you're going to not I know it you're terrible Man. <laughs> um, everybody in that movie is great and the yeah. music is so good i think pure so imagination good. is yeah. one of my all-time favorite songs so yeah it's um, a super super quotable movie and you can't say that about the tim burton version like absolutely no. i i whenever whenever an opportunity for me to say it at work for me to say good day sir i said good day, good day. <laughs> oh, i'm a tad yes. deaf in this year speak a little louder you speak Joel, busy lifting oh. drinks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so many good things. We we do nothing but stand Willy Wonka. It's just mm-hmm. up against Chicago. Yep. And there's nothing I can do there. So uh, Chicago <laughs> advances. Willy Wonka does not. Next up, it's three seed Grease up against two seed Rocky Horror Picture Show. Kate, touch a touch a touch a touch us <laughs> with your pitch for Rocky Horror <laughs> while I make like Bad Sandy and tell us all about Grease studs. Kate, go first. Ah, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. What is there to say about the musical that launched a thousand midnight shadow casts? Like it is, <laughs> it is a great. You know, it's interesting because it was a stage show, but it was a stage show built as a love letter to movies, right? Mm-hmm. The the opening, uh, you know, song is science fiction double feature talking about all the great uh, RKO pictures that are inspiring Richard O'Brien to tell this story about a mad scientist in this completely bonkers, uh, queer rock and roll fantasy um, that really kind of invents midnight movies, right? Like when it came out, it was a bomb until its people found it and made it become a thing. So the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I think, even though it is a movie version of what was originally a stage show, is its like real form, (laughs) the form where it gets, I think, the most kind of like staying power as a cultural Mm -hmm. object. The songs are great. The cast is great. Tim Curry as Dr. Frankenfurter is one of, I'm going to say it, the most iconic film performances in a musical. It is certainly one of my favorite performances in any movie of any kind that I have ever seen. He is just having the time of his goddamn life as this character, and it's palpable. Um, What else do I want to say about it? Yeah, it's a great freaking movie musical. Damn it, Janet. <laughs> Damn it, Janet. Um, I I think the strength of that version of it is, the testament to it, is they've tried to remake it at least once, I think yeah. maybe more than once, and nothing, nothing nope. com- comes close. It's, it's the weird alchemy of that, yep. where they made it, who they made it with. It's got time. F- the time it's got funny like 70s timing and energy and i actually i was teaching a class once on monsters and i showed it to the students and they they knew that it was this like cultural thing but they just didn't it was like a foreign text to them they couldn't quite understand its rhythms it is still a a really powerful work that calls to its people I think if we were doing a bracket on science fiction and cult films, oh, yeah. I would be pushing it through to the finish, no question. And I'm not at all disparaging the music in this show because it's great. Um, I believe, in fact, a member of this panel starred on in this show fairly recently, uh, correct? That is correct. Uh, yes. Two and a half years ago, I got to play Rocky Horror, ah! which was... Um, a blast because as a as a redhead with a full beard, um, it was it was pretty intense to shave and dye my hair blonde. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it was you know like I I fell in love with the picture show in high school. Um, so when I finally had the chance twenty years later to play a character on stage, uh, yeah, I jumped at the opportunity and I, you know, I'm too my own horn, but I got to also do it off Broadway. So oh, biggie. <gasps> and just so you know, dear leaders, the Frankenfurter in that production was none other than Mrs. Kasha Davis from season seven what? of RuPaul's Drag Race. 
it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Uh, just I'm so Mary you know. Davis. That's right. Just <laughs> dropping some names over there. <laughs> no Hi. Okay. Um, so uh, with all of that being said, um, everyone loves Greece. Everyone loves Greece, uh, except for Bob, because he hates everything. But 99.9% <laughs> of the people on this planet love Greece, and I believe that there is a reason for that. Um, it is packed for nos- with nostalgia for boomers, but for Gen Xers and beyond, it's still one of the best movie musicals about the American teenage experience. And I know we can talk about how it's problematic with the messaging at the end, and I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm not going to sit here and try to explain to you why it's okay that Sandy has to change herself to, to get the man. Although I would point out that also the man is trying to change him self to get sandy um but i think the main point that i'm going to push here and why i think it deserves to advance even over rocky horror which is peerless in many ways is the songs in greece are unimpeachable summer nights grease lightning look at me i'm sandra d born to hand jive the entire dance sequence in the gym is amazing cha-cha di gregorio the best dancer at saint bernadette's barely says any <laughs> lines still a star hopelessly devoted to you you're the one that i want there are worse things i could do one of our all time great slut anthems <laughs> beauty school dropout we go together is there a bad number in the grease movie i don't think there is it is just one after another, and the cast performs them great. Now, that cast <laughs> is incredible. They are, some of them, rather old for their roles. I think Stalker Channing was like 35, mm-hmm. playing a 17-year-old, but she still sold it. And you have Olivia Newton-John, a completely fuckable John Travolta. Like, it is it is a great film And there is a reason, as Dan pointed out to us in part one of this, which is on Patreon, that it was up until, what, 2017, you said? 2017. The highest grossing movie musical of all time. I think it speaks to every age. And I think there is a universality about it. And I just can't see it. As much as I love Rocky Horror and I do, that is a phenomenon, but is a niche phenomenon. And I think we would be doing a disservice to musicals as a genre to not push through the one that is more representative of, I think, the widest audience. That's just my argument. So uh, I'm going to put it to a vote. Bob, where are you on this? So I don't hate Greece. I know. I was kidding. Um, kidding. I'm actually, I am actually voting for Greece based on a lot of the reasons that you just shared. Um, You know, I think that um, when it comes to Greece, it, it's a tighter package and they're, for me with Rocky horror, when I'm watching that, I kind of, I lose it about halfway to two, you know, three quarters of the way through. Like I don't kind of care about the rest of it in the end. Um, my favorite songs have come and gone and now I'm done. Um, so I'm, I'm with Greece cause it keeps me from beginning to end. And it's a tighter package. A tighter <laughs> like package. John Just like John Travolta's <laughs> pants. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and where are you on this? Um, this, uh, this, this, this was, these were great arguments. Um, I'm, I'm going to flip my vote from Rocky Horror to Greece. Um, I think for, for the reasons you pointed out, Greece does have that universal musical appeal. Um, and it is just as, as a movie, it is just a tight film, um, that just works. Kate, will you forgive us for eliminating Rocky Horror? Maybe. No, I will. I will forgive you. But you know what? Another word for universal appeal is basic. Ooh. <laughs> Grace oh. is basic. And you, you would know it. basic more. Wait, <laughs> what? Grace what? is the word. Um, and with that, with that, Rocky Horror is out. I will remove the cause, but not the symptoms. All right. So <laughs> next up, we three quarters of us wanted to climb every mountain along with one see the sound of music, while Bob wants you to sample the worst pies in London and Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, a five seed. Bob, sharpen your blade and attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. And Dan, rep for music and explain why Bob should be the lonely goat herd in this argument. <laughs> rep for music like in general or music is in sound of uh sound of music yes i think we can all say that we are pro music in general uh go ahead dan first okay um so again sound of music is one of those movie musicals that just has uh amazing staying power uh you know for a movie that came out in 65 and is still shown on tv 
every year. Um, people know it. There are sing-along versions. They still do screenings of the film in theaters. And again, not recently because <laughs> pandemic. Um, <laughs> but it just, <clears throat> it was one of those juggernauts that just doesn't let up. Um, it's long for sure. It is a long musical. Um but it's so good. I mean, Julie Andrews is incredible. Christopher Plummer is uh, like scary and hot. And that's like a whole weird thing when you know, you're know you a kid and you're like, I don't know. Am I scared of him or is, does this work? I don't know what's going on. Um, the kids are great. Um, you know, they go from, you know, good performers to just adorable little children. Um I mean, we all kind of wanted to be the Baroness a little bit because she just looked fabulous. Absolutely. Um, Flawless style. And and on top of all of that, they're also telling the story of people trying to flee the rise of the Third Reich. Like, w- this movie crosses so many stories and mm. it's just, like, it it's so crazy and it's so good um you know and interesting and, and later on in uh in round two um and i find it interesting we wouldn't discuss cabaret they are both told at the same time period um in our very different musicals um, I was thinking point. about this dad yeah <laughs> So Sound of Music is, you know, it 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 shows the, you know, the importance of family and uh, those bonds, but, you know, that you have to persevere. And um, I think that that story um, resonates with people still today. I would argue that in the past four years, it was more relevant than it had been. So. Oof, we have climbed a lot of mountains. <laughs> yes, seriously, we got more to climb. Bob, your argument for Sweeney Todd. Gosh, you know, I think obviously I, I, I think for me, this might be leaning more towards my preferences, I guess, but like I, I see sound of music as a beautiful movie. Um, the cinematography, the settings, the location, it's just a gorgeous film to look at. Everybody's really good in it. Um, Julie Andrews is wonderful in it. Um, I just don't think it's a better musical. Um, maybe I'm just more of a Sondheim fan. I don't know. Um, I just don't think it's a better musical. I think that Sweeney Todd is, is, is really, it's more interesting. I think it has, you know, it's, it's a little bit different from other musicals. It's like, this is about a guy who kills people, um, in his barbershop. Um, I think that, you know, the Tim Burton version of this film obviously is the Tim Burton version. And he's, you know, it's, it's, it, he made a lot of choices when he was making it from the the style, the tone, the the visual, the visual look of the film. Like they both do this, but I think that adding in the story of Sweeney Todd and the music from Sweeney Todd, I just think that it's just more more engaging for me. And it's more like what happens next, what happens next, as opposed to this lovely little tale that takes you through. Um, well, I guess it's not all lovely little tale. Part of that, but, <laughs> um, but, Actually, it's a little dark. But, Spoiler. Yeah, it does get a little dark, but you know, I just think that it just, it maybe it's, there's times in that movie too, where it's like, they're aware that they're singing because they're a singing family. Um, you know, I just, I don't know. I guess that's where I am with Sweeney Todd. It's just to me, it, I think it's a little bit more interesting. It's more, um, it's more interesting musical, and and it's it's just that's that's where I am. <laughs> it's certainly a more musical, or excuse me, a more modern piece, right? Yeah. So the sound of mm-hmm. music is undis. You cannot distinguish it from the time period in that it was made, right? Yeah. It is very Absolutely. much that golden age kind of. Um, not the, the original golden age of musicals, because that's farther back, like 30s, 40s. But it, it's, it is that kind of quintessential Hol- Hollywood musical. And Sweeney Todd is doing something much more dangerous. So I appreciate that, because it's, I, I agree what you're with Bob, what's Bob saying is that it's more interesting. Yeah. But in Helena terms Barb of... Carter is amazing in it, too. She's so good. Oh, She's yeah. Such a good, yeah. <clears throat> I actually, I, I like the movie very much across the board, and I think everybody's good in it. I can't think of a bad cast in it. Um mm-hmm. But I'm giving it to Sound of Music because it's the Sound of Music and it's a juggernaut. I mm-hmm. I just don't know how I can say no. This is one of those things where we cut out a lot of chaff in round one, everybody. Uh, so we're now <laughs> dealing with, as Sweeney Todd himself would be familiar, the leanest cuts. This would be, you know, the vicar, if you have, if you will, of, of musicals. Um, but it, uh, I have to give it to Sound of Music. Kate, what about you? Uh, Sweeney Todd is 200% more my taste. I think it is a genius, a genius 
uh, work of musical theater. Um, as a film, I think you cannot deny that Sound of Music has that cultural, pop cultural cl- clout in a way that the film of Sweeney Todd does not. Um, so I have to give it to Sound of Music. Also, I love those little puppets. I love a puppet. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker part, for a puppet. It's, it's the only part of that movie I can stomach watching. Like, it just... <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I that's that that's very harsh it's not it's you know i i can't get through the sound of music so, i mean it's yeah. very i again dan i was thinking the exact same thing i was like sound of music is like the, the light side of cabaret i am 110 percent much more of a cabaret person too than i am yeah. a sound of music person <laughs> <laughs> well we will get like i i saw it through the entire carrie underwood and vampire bill version of sound of music oh. so if i can get through that, that i can get through the Dewey anders version i can love it uh, so i believe that means that with a three to one vote sound of music is continuing next up it is three seed moulin rouge versus my fair lady a seven seed the panelists are unanimously decided to push moulin through rouge through to round three here uh but kate did a really compelling argument of that in round one if you are a fan of my fair lady i do suggest that you check that out uh we will be moving on another unanimous victory this time we decided to feed audrey to an advanced little shop of horrors a one seed to the elite eight knocking out fiddler on roof a five seed and in a big upset in round one eight seed cabaret ousted west seed side story a one seed now Fraulein sally bowles and the kid cat girls <laughs> still have three quarters of our votes up against three seed mama mia dan tell us why cabaret should keep sitting pretty bob explain why you're asking us to change our minds and take a chance on mama mia i'm gonna have bob go first yeah so for me of mama mia over cabaret i i love mama mia i think kate you get to talk about the first round go to the patreon and listen you know she does a great job of arguing why mama mia is a great jukebox musical i would argue flippers, it, flippers. I, would, I would argue it's <laughs> actually it, yes it features music from from this this group but they they put such a good story around it i i don't know as though i would necessarily qualify it into the jukebox musical like i would like a jersey boys or um the rock of ages is that the one is that yeah the one? yep um, that's <laughs> Yeah, Let's not speak of it. It's like but, it's like platinum class jukebox musical. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the gold standard of a jukebox musical. It has Meryl Streep, Amanda Seyfried, Pierce Brosnan. Um, <laughs> it, this film has everything. No, um, but for me, when it comes to musicals, you know. It, I might be contradicting myself on other art on, you know, certainly on the Sweeney Todd piece of things, but it's, it's, it's fun. It's peppy. It's, it's, it's great to listen to, to sing along to. I think there's some great songs in cabaret that you sing along to too, but it's, for me, it's another one of those that kind of goes a little bit too, too long in certain parts. It's a little too depressing, a little too like, let's, 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 let's pep it up a little bit. Um, you know, not that there's not peppy songs in it. Cause there are, um, I th- just think, you know, mama me is a lot more, a lot more fun and a lot more razzle dazzle state, you know, whether it be stage or on screen. Um, I also say, you know, I was talking with um, my roommate about it last as I was preparing for this. And I said, God, doesn't it look like they're just having so much fun making this movie? Like <laughs> Meryl Streep loved making that movie. I don't know if that's true. I think it's true because that's the performance she gave me, but um, <laughs> it's also because she's Streep. And again, Cabaret doesn't have Meryl Streep. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, well put. Dan, why Cabaret? So Cabaret may not have Meryl Streep, but it does have Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Um, yes, and Liza. she's just, I mean, <sighs> I, I, listen, unabashed Minnelli fan. Um, a Finelli, if you will. But, uh, a Finelli, if you will. <laughs> um, but I will say this, I, I think this is her best role on film. Um it would it would probably edge closely with Lucille two on Arrested Development, uh, which is brilliant. Um, but she she is so good in in the role as Sally, um, and her chemistry with Joel Gray um, is it's so good and at times so unnerving because they're so odd um and you drop in young michael york into this um and I, you know the the songs are again this 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 is one of those musicals where the songs are not um you know necessarily the catchiest um they're not always the most hummable what um, they're not I, ones what? maybe I <laughs> 
Um, but they're they're so good at telling their story. Um, you know, Kander and Ebb wrote such amazing music and lyrics for this that you know um, they ju- it, the 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 story within the songs stick with you. Um, you know, and and this this is one where I think. Uh, you know, the, the movie and the stage version are very similar. Um, and the movie version is definitely like a, a glitzier version of the stage show, which in its uh, in and of itself can be a little awkward because, again, it's about the rise of the Third Reich. Um, but it it does it in a way where it's trying to ignore what's happening in the world around you. Um, and then you have those stark scenes with Michael York where it's like, oh, right, but actually life is terrible, um, which is such a juxtaposition mm-hmm. to the opening when Joel Grey is talking about how life is beautiful. Um, and it it's not. Like, it's Berlin in the 30s. It's not beautiful. Um, you know, shit was about to go down. And then shit goes down by the end. Mm-hmm. Um but you know the performances are great. The choreography by Fosse is amazing, um, and it's just again, it's one of those movies that is like dirty, sexy, seventies, smoky, um, and just I don't know. It just it it sticks. It sticks with you. Um, I just I love it. I love it. <laughs> so Kate, I believe you have cabaret going quite a ways uh, i do i'm guessing I you're, do. A, you're a vote for cabaret here yes mine yes. hair mine hair um i i also am an easy vote for cabaret here i love mamma mia uh drink time bob and i saw that in the, in the theaters together drink <laughs> it is it is unquestionably just joy on screen right it, they are mm-hmm. having such a good time we didn't mention baranski who's amazing in that movie um but I have to give this to Cabaret. I think Cabaret, again, works better as a film than it does on the sh- on street. Uh, excuse me, on the stage. I've seen it at least twice, once on Broadway. I think, Bob, you saw it with me on Broadway. You right? and I saw it together at um, 54, Club uh, <laughs> Studio 54. Drink. Gina Gershon, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. With Gina Gershon. She was yes. great. She was, was great. It, was it um, Alan Cumming? Was he the MC? It was not. He had, no. he had left at that point. And I don't even think it was Michael C. Hall. Um It was fine, but I actually think the movie version is better. And I think most of that is going to come down to Liza Minnelli in that movie is Mm -hmm. hypnotic from the second she's on stage. Like that is star power. Just poo right in your face. You can't take your eyes off of her. And it's a very, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a vulnerability to that Mm -hmm. performance that is captivating. Um, So it's, it's a, a tough one because party all the time mama mia awesome not gonna say a bad word about it but in terms of a better movie i have to give it to cabaret which means it would advance and that makes me sad because mama mia makes me think of my days when i used to have three daddies in one weekend and (laughs) (laughs) you pre-pandemic pre-pandemic right Uh... all right so next it's mary poppins a one seed versus les miserables a four seed it was a another unanimous victory for our panel uh pushing through mary poppins Again, if you want to hear the Les Mis discussion, you can go over to the Patreon. Uh, I think I can just sum it up basically by saying that while we agree that Les Mis is not a great movie, uh, we put it through. I'm not going to say what it was up against in the first round, but Mary Poppins is Mary Poppins. And we will be discussing that more at length in the second half of this episode. Finally, in the Sweet 16, we were evenly split between two undeniable classics. The Wizard of Oz, a two-seed, and Sing in the Rain, a three-seed. Bob, find the heart, brain, and courage to take Wizard of Oz home, while Dan, make us laugh and vote for Singing in the Rain. I'm going to go to Dan first. Okay. Um, Yeah, this is a vicious, vicious uh, competition here. Um... So, uh, singing in the rain, um, you know, that for me, I can point to that as the movie musical that made me obsess over movie musicals. Um, you you know, it was the one that it it was, you know, I I had grown up seeing so many movie musicals because my parents are huge musical fans. Um, but it wasn't until I saw Singing in the Rain. I it's probably in high school, and I was like, "What is this magic <laughs> happening?" Um, G, I, I, Gene Kelly is insane. Um, 
you know, Donald O'Connor's performance is, I mean, absurd. I mean, he was literally mm-hmm. hospitalized during filming. Um, and I, <laughs> sweet little Debbie Reynolds. Um, she's such a baby in this and she's, she's so good. And she's, she's, you know, she's so new to the industry um, that she brings this like innocence and purity to the role of Kathy. Um, And, you know, despite (laughs) maybe it not being rosy off camera um, between everybody, but the, the, the joy and drive and Mm -hmm. camaraderie they share on screen is so infectious. Um, And then you have such an amazing, weird villain in Lena Lamont uh, (laughs) with her ridiculous voice and that pink fur shawl thing that like I still kind of want to have. And just these over the top, crazy caricatures of movie musical characters from the 20s and 30s. Um, you know, so it's 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 part homage to the heyday of movie musicals, but also showing how far movie musicals have come um, in their, you know, kind of the their 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 the way they present them um, and the way the, the <clears throat> style of them has changed from how many people in identical costumes can we fit on one soundstage to how do we tell these intimate personal stories through song and dance. Um, And the music is ridiculously good. Uh, The choreography from Kelly is insane. Um, And, you know, it's referenced still um, in, in pop culture today. And it just, I mean, it's so good. It's just so good. It's so good. (laughs) I hear that. Uh, Bob, speaking of it's so good and referenced in pop culture today, give me the Wizard of Oz. (laughs) (laughs) So talk about, undeniable classic right like who doesn't know this movie who hasn't seen this movie the wizard of oz it's it's really from beginning to end it's it's just a complete classic every, you know every year it comes on t it used to come on tv every year now it's on tv any old, any old time you want it but um and you always wanted to make that appointment to watch it each year it's got judy garland and you know the performance that everybody really i think knows her for um globally not necessarily um from you know from you know, like the gay community the gays i was gonna say gay just say gays <laughs> <laughs> but like, know. you know it's a it's a musical that has appeal across all age groups kids love it adults love it they can watch it together as a group um you know i don't know as though the the same goes for singing singing in the rain i think there are children who probably will enjoy that movie but like when you think about just enjoying it as a family film i think the wizard of oz takes it um it's got great songs it's got great um sets it's got um, a really cool, um, you know, a feature in the beginning where it's in black and white. And then when we go to Oz, it becomes color. So it's it's really fantastical in that way. And it, you get big eye. You're as a child, you get big eyes when you're watching it. It's just really, really a, a charming film that's not too heavy, um, you know, as some of the others, other movie musicals might be on this bracket as um, or, you know, not as adult or mature as something like singing in the singing in the rain. Although it does have a high body count. Let's, let's yeah, put that's that true. It's yeah, very it does. It's very it true. does. <clears throat> you know, I just think with, with, you know, musicals, you know, and, and you want to make sure that, you know, I, I think that with, when it comes to a musical or a movie musical, you want to make sure that there's a lot of, it, it appeals to a lot, a large group, a lot of people, um, a lot of people can enjoy it. You know, the broader the appeal, I think, you know, maybe it's, it's the better musical and maybe not necessarily the better film. Um, but you know, that's for me on The Wizard of Oz. I think, you know, I'm so closely torn on this because I think Singing in the Rain is of when you think of just the phrase movie musical, I think it's kind of defines Mm -hmm. it a little Mm -hmm. bit, right? Mm -hmm. There is this, there is this segment in the middle of that film, that Broadway melody melody. segment that from beginning to end, that whole segment, like, is just fantastic Broadway musical, right? The, you know, you think the Busby Berkeley type stuff or the big, just over the top production numbers that really make no sense in the total concept of the whole film. Like he's mm-hmm. trying to pitch, he's trying to pitch the film and it goes on far too long because of that. Right. But, um, <laughs> Absolutely. But like that's one of those like defining things about a movie musical. So it's so hard and such a fine line of, of where I vote on this. Um, 
where I thought the the Wizard of Oz fits that classic a little bit more because it's a classic for everyone. So, Kate, I'm going to put it to you. Are you still sticking with Singing in the Rain? Yes, yes, because I do think of the Wizard of Oz as a classic as like just like a classic American film. I don't necessarily think of it as a musical. It is, but like Singing in the Rain is the er musical film. <laughs> and that's mm. that's where I would where I come down on that. So I hear that. Um I'm still with Wizard of Oz here. In my opinion, both of these should be one mm. seeds. And I mm. think it's ridiculous that they're up against each other in round yeah. two. Because yeah. They yeah. They are awesome. they're they're juggernauts, essentially. This is um, a final two matchup. This is a final two matchup. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. And it's yeah. happening in round two. Um, so I, it really kills me because I agree with the argument that uh, both of these are quintessential American films. When you think of American musicals, you're probably going to go to Singing in the Rain. But I think there are a couple of things that were said that really sway me. Number one, I think Bob is correct in that while Singing in the Rain may have been universal when we were kids – through teenage years i doubt if you go to anyone under the age of 20 now they have any idea what that movie is i don't think there's an awareness maybe but i doubt it i think everybody still knows wizard of oz and it's that you can say well that doesn't make it a good musical but i think we need to just accept the fact that both of these are equally good musicals the i i I disagree really yes i think singing in the rain is a better musical because it is about musicals it is about musicals, but it is also not original music. Like yes, that's, that's the true. thing. That it's true. all a pastiche of music from other shows that they just cobbled mm-hmm. together for this. Whereas the music in The Wizard of Oz is original for Wizard of Oz. And in fact, they had so much of it, they cut entire production numbers even after they filmed them. Like the jitterbug scene, you can find like outtakes. But um, if we're talking mm-hmm. about musicals, this is a, fi- and we're looking at them as films, as creations. The music was integral to the storytelling and the creation of Wizard of Oz in a way that it wasn't for Singing in the Rain. For God singing damn the it, rain. you're making a good point, Eric. I know. I think that the music <laughs> and Singing in the Rain were put in as, well, now we need another set piece with another dance number because we've got Gene fucking Kelly. Um, and in Wizard of Oz, the music is all actually critical to the plot, and they're all great numbers. The Munchkin Land scene is off the chain. Uh, we're not even going to even talk about Somewhere of the Rainbow. I think the the, the the various songs of the uh, the three companions, like th- I think the physicality in all of them is really really strong. It's you know, what? Yeah, you're swaying me. You're swaying me. It is actually a musical in a way that Singing in the Rain is not. Singing in the Rain is more like a jukebox musical. Yeah, it's more like it Mama Mia. Yeah, yeah, yep. it's true. Yep, it's, yep, yeah, it's, yep. All right, I'm swayed. Well, I, I'm swayed. Wizard. All right, then I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop because I don't want to <laughs> blow all my load right now. Oh, that was that was healthy. In um, sleep, he came to me. <laughs> <laughs> in dreams he came. <laughs> exactly. So with that said, we are going to move uh, Wizard of Oz on. We're going to take out Singing in the Rain, and that's going to be it for round two. We are down to our Elite Eight. We are going to change reels. So now's a great time to head to the lobby and buy yourself a treat. We will be right back. Hey, Kate. Hey, Eric. So I heard, and this may be true, that you were actually the Great Pop Culture Debate's very first Patreon subscriber. (gasps) Was I? You were. You're not only a panelist, you're also a founder. Also a founder. I mean, it does give me a feeling of joy to contribute towards high quality podcasts like the Great Pop Culture Debate so that, you know, like I get swag. Yeah. What kind of swag do you get? Um, You get a button. That's the one I signed up for. Is there a tote? I feel like there should be a tote. (laughs) There's not a tote yet, but that's a great idea. I have some other ideas that I'm working on. You get access to things early. You get access to Patreon only little mini-sodes. You get to hear the warm-ups before when everyone's just kind of getting their little sea legs before they get into the main the main attraction and you get season zero you get season zero it's exactly right you will never hear the otherwise folks and there's some great episodes in that which include best madonna single best rupaul's drag race lip sync best uh 90s cartoon and the only way you can hear those is by getting a patreon sponsorship with for as low as two dollars a month then you even get season zero just for that. So so thank you very much, Kate. Uh, we appreciate all of our Patreon sponsors. And if you do have the interest, please go to patreon.com backslash great pop culture debates and support us.
Welcome back to the great pop culture debate on the best movie musicals. We are down to the our elite eight, so it's time for a second act complication to keep our young lovers apart. Uh, first up, we have Chicago versus Greece. We're going to go around the horn for votes. I'm going to start with Bob. Where are you coming down? Um, Chicago. All right, I'm going to go to Dan. I'm going to go with Chicago. Kate. Uh, Chicago. Okay, so that's unanimous for Chicago. And we will hold <laughs> off on uh, discussing Chicago more till we begin to the next round. But mm-hmm. I will say uh, everything I said about Greece in round two, I stand behind. It is a great American musical, uh, but it is not the great American. You know what? It's a little bit how I feel about Mariah Carey's Christmas song. It's fine. Ooh. <laughs> Savage. Spicy. Spicy. All right. So the next matchup is Sound of Music versus Moulin Rouge. I'm going to start with Kate. Uh, Okay. So I feel like Sound of Music is probably going to take this because it is actually like a juggernaut, as we've discussed. But I'm going to stump for Moulin Rouge because it is one of my favorite films of all time. It is Bononkers. It is Bononkers. That's true. It needs its own word. It does. Yeah. The experience of seeing this film in the theater is one of one of my top you know, experiences of seeing a film in a theater. God damn, I miss seeing films in theaters. But mm-hmm. it is such a love letter to popular music. And yes, there is only one song that was written for this movie, but I actually don't even think it was written for this movie. It was written for some other movie and not used, so they couldn't put it up for best song at the Oscars if I'm remembering my Moulin Rouge trivia correctly. Uh, it is a pastiche of all this other stuff, but it tells its own story, and it is such a... A, a feast. This film is a freaking feast. If you like musicals, I love it. <laughs> so I'm guessing you're voting for Moulin Rouge. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, Dan, where are you? Um, yeah, I, I listen. I stand by my arguments for the sound of music in the previous round. Um, Moulin Rouge, I think, is incredible. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, this may make me partial, but I did see it in the theater on my first date with my now husband um so yeah moulin rouge (gasps) bob so wow interesting um (laughs) so (laughs) first of all i'd like to point out that the hills are alive with the sound of music are in both of these movies this is true true. (laughs) but in only one of them in only one of them does ewan mcgregor sing it (laughs) so they are both feasts for the eyes i think you know yes. in different ways um both from cinematography and then just like wacky badonkers or what was that the word badonkers <laughs> badonkers bado- cuts, i don't know quick cuts and edits and just yes. colors and, and Lerman. Fun, right Baz Lermaniness. yes Baz Lermaniness. <laughs> One of them has Kylie Minogue and one of them does not. It's true. Um, it's true. That's a real good point. But In the I absence think, of Streep, where is Kylie? I, I think that the fact that the hills are alive with the sound of music is in Moulin Rouge. Therein lies the point that sound of music is probably the better musical because it's pulling that in and saying, well, this is a great piece of musical theater. We need to incorporate it into our film. Um, so, and I just think that the fact that there's... <sighs> I think the the music is not it it's a jukebox musical I guess if we're going to continue to use that that term because the music that we're that we're putting in there is is not original music for the film um although they do a really good job of making sure that the music and the way they they use it moves the plot forward Mm -hmm. um but I think just overall it's tough to say because they're so different in styles of filmmaking I, you know, Sound of Music is the classic, and I think it's just a beautiful and visually gorgeous film. Um, and it is, in, in, is in fact, itself a musical from start to finish in what it is, I guess, in, in its creation and all those all those pieces. So I, I will vote for Sound of Music, even though I don't care for it that much. And I do love Moulin Rouge. Um, you know, I just think from, uh, you know, from that filmmaking perspective and the fact that um, it's a it's a musical. I am with Bob here. Um, I, I Listen, I rewatched Moulin Rouge recently for this. I had not seen it in years. I saw it in the theater originally. I saw it with Bob in the theater. Drink. Drink. Um, and um, <laughs> I loved it as soon as I saw it. I thought it was bold and refreshing. And mm-hmm. in addition to being a musical feast, it's also a visual feast. It is hyper-saturated with colors. Um, Uma McGregor is gorgeous. Nicole Kidman is gorgeous. Uh, the sets are amazing. The Can-Can girls are fantastic. But it is 
chaotic. Like that mm-hmm. is a chaotic movie. And I was like, whoa, this is as an adult watching it and trying to distill what's going on. It's um, it's intense and, and not necessarily in a way that I enjoyed. <laughs> um, but I think what I do love Moulin Rouge still. I think it is a modern take on a musical. And I think you could argue it revitalized yes. cinema musicals. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because <clears throat> um, this came out 97. Is that what we said? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, it was 2001. It was 2000, yeah. For some odd reason, I thought it was late 90s. Um, and I think without Moulin Rouge, do you get Chicago? Do you yeah. get a, a lot of these, like now we're in the second golden age of movie musicals. I don't think you do. And so I have a lot of respect for Moulin Rouge from that respect, from that perspective. But if we're talking is, I think Bob's got a great point. How are you going to put the Xerox copy version of something forward instead of the original? And mind you, what Xerox, it made basically, it turned uh, movie musicals and pop songs into a zine. And that's what Moulin Rouge is. God bless its um, heart. Yeah, no, I, I will change my vote because like I cannot philosophically let Moulin Rouge not let Sound of Music go through, but it is Moulin Rouge is my preferred film of the two. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to watch that. it over Sound of Music any day. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I, I think I would too. But in terms of the better movie musical, I give it to Sound of Music. So are you going to be terribly distraught, Dan, if we boot Moulin Rouge? No, I, I fully understand this. And I mean, yes. It, uh, listen, Sound of Music should advance should, should ahead of Moulin Rouge. I get it. I get it. Um, you know, it's fine. It was just my birthday with my husband. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> though, though we do both also really, really also truly love the Sound of Music. So it's a win-win in our household. Exactly. Did you end the first date with the Lady Marmalade version with Lil' Kim and Christina Aguilera? <laughs> that still sounds real good. It still, uh, it yeah, still oh, slaps. Uh. All right. So Maya. moving on. Sorry. <laughs> where, where is Maya, by the way? I don't know where Maya um, is. <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors versus Cabaret is our next matchup. And I want to start with Dan. Um, Little Shop, Rick Moranis, Giant Puppets, uh, great songs. I, 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 I love it. I love everything about it. Weird oh, story. <laughs> Bob. Um, I'm with Little Shop of Horrors. Ellen Green uh, built a career off of this character. <laughs> um, yeah. And she's phenomenal in it. Um, the cast is phenomenal. It's fun. It's It's not, it's dark, but it's not like, I'm going to walk away depressed, dark. Um, I I just think it's a lot of fun in that regard. And that's where I am. Kate. This is real hard, friends. Little Shop of Horrors is one of my favorite films, period. Of of the two films, it is the one that is more my preference, more my kind of style of things that I like. Um, And the Muppet stuff, it is such a successful Mm. puppet it's such a successful stagey but cinematic translation to screen frank oz Mm -hmm. you did a bang up job oh so good but there's something like the ending is flat to me and i know that's because of reasons that we can get to when we probably move on to the next round um if it moves on i will be thrilled but i do feel like i frag like I, I love cabaret. I love that mm-hmm. it's the anti sound of music, right? I love that it's this sort of decadent, <clears throat> sleazy. Um, but at the same time, the filmic, like the character study between uh, Sally Bowles and Michael York's character, I forget what his name is, is Michael York's character. That character study feels so intimate and so what you want from a film of that sort of 70s time period, right? It feels completely organic for that to be a movie, right? For it to work like that. And I love that it's because movie musicals tend to be very uh, vulnerable and big emotions and they can feel very artificial, right? But there needs to be something underneath them that grounds them, that gives that artifici- artifice like weight and juxtaposition so you really get this you know, incredibly rich experience that is the musical form is like translating something about experience to you through this, through this uh, form of people bursting into song. Um, And I think Cabaret does that beautifully. It's so heartbreaking and so good. And so Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's just, yeah, it's a great movie. Um, and I feel like Little Shop of Horrors, maybe if it were made in a different time period, could have had its original stage ending and could have gotten to a place like that. Um, and and the yeah, it's a complicated feeling. Eric, what are you saying? Oh, I'm seeing Little Shop. Okay, then I'm, I'm going to stand. I'm, then I'm going to stand for Cabaret here because I know, no, it's 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 Sally Freilein. I love you. <laughs> well, maybe next time. <laughs> all right we're advancing the shop of horrors and our final uh, elite eight matchup it's mary poppins versus wizard of oz and i want to start with bob i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with wizard of oz i mean i love mary poppins and i think that it's a great movie musical and it's it's created as a movie musical but just oh gosh actually i'm gonna talk myself out of it maybe too because <laughs> i think that it's a classic that you know they're both classics that really span all ages um but I think maybe the first go to for most, at least, and maybe I'm just, you know, you know, talking shit right now or talking out of my ass <laughs> Talk, about it. Talking but, real shit about movie musicals. <laughs> like talking real shit. I think the first go to is Wizard of Oz. And it's when you think movie musical, people I don't think automatically think Mary Poppins. I think they might automatically think Wizard of Oz because it's the one that's so um, culturally huge. So I'm going to stick with the Wizard of Oz on that one. Dan. Um, yeah, these Bob, Bob makes really good points. Um, you know, if 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 I had to choose one to watch right now, I would watch Mary Poppins, but I would vote for The Wizard of Oz because of its cultural impact. And Kate, Wizard of Oz, most definitely. There is not a terrifying scene where people are fake laughing on a ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite scene oh are you are you kidding me that no, scene that, that scene and the, gives and the chalk drawings oh so my God. good the, the yes. laughing on the ceiling that that is the oh same feeling i get watching the greatest showman it feels so artificial i i just my body i, I like curl up like a shrimp <laughs> it's, like, it's like full body uncomfortable anyway well, so that's unanimous then for Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Nothing against Mary Poppins except for Dick Van Dyke's accent. Uh, but uh, no, it is. It is. These are two again. These are these are ultimately these could be the final two matchup. These mm-hmm. are both excellent movies. They are, I think, absolutely peerless examples of the art form. But if I had to pick one over the other, I'm going with Wizard of Oz. It's the one that was ingrained in me as a kid. And it's not even a nostalgia thing because the people who watched uh, uh, Mary Poppins as a kid also watched Wizard of Oz as a kid. (laughs) So there you go. Um, So our final four Mm -hmm. is Chicago versus The Sound of Music, Little Shop of Horrors versus Wizard of Oz. I always like to take this moment to take a step back and see if this feels correct and think how we got here. Uh, I'm seeing a 2000s, a 1980s, a 19... uh, 60s? 60s, 60s, and 30s, right? 30s. So we have a nice range of uh, kind of across the musicals uh, throughout time. Um, I don't think they're all alike. I actually think they're all very different types of musicals, which I love. Yeah. And I think they're all movies that, um, you could watch over and over again and they are unequivocally movie musicals. So with that said, let's jump into Chicago versus sound of music. And I want to start with Dan. Damn it. Um, ah, God, this is, this is tuck. I mean, I, I love the movie version of Chicago. Um, but uh, again i get i think i gotta go with sound of music for its cultural perseverance and relevance all right (laughs) (laughs) i i mean i can keep this argument short (laughs) Catherine zeta jones fucking nailed it (laughs) (laughs) i want that on a t-shirt yeah i mean it's it's so good Chicago is so good. And I, I really love, you know, I, I, you might not think so after listening through this, but I do really love the sound of music for what it is. Right. Um, I don't love watching it um, very often, but um, <laughs> Chicago, I would watch any day of the week. I think it is so perfect in translating something to the screen and actually making it better. I enjoy the movie Chicago more than I enjoyed the stage show. I think it incorporates the, mm-hmm. the, the Tay Diggs character into it really well. Um, it kind of takes these kind of chunky sections and really weaves them better together, I think, and making them more of a narrative story from beginning to end. Um, like, I just think it is, it's so good. It's so tight. It, there's nothing that's, that's like 
you know, bloated about it in any way. It's just so good. And the cast is phenomenal, um, as I mentioned with regards to Catherine Zeta. All right. <laughs> and Kate. I think it's so interesting that we're all like, oh, the sound of music, I guess. Like, no one's happy about seeing it advance, which is just a weird thing. But it just feels it, it just feels so monumental. You can't not give it its due. It was never my favorite, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat here. And I was having the exact same thought is I have been advancing Sound of Music because I feel like I am obligated to advance the Sound of Music. Mm. I am not trying to shit on it. It's a great movie. It's it really well done. Yeah. But if we're talking, do I enjoy watching the Sound of Music? Mm-hmm. I don't not enjoy it, but I don't love it. I love Chicago. Like Chicago, I think. It's <laughs> and I, I, uh, we can go more into this because I'm pretty sure we're three to one right now, right? It's yeah, th- yeah. For Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, listen, and 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 I'm good with Chicago because again, I think it it does far succeed the the stage production. I mean, nothing against the stage production, but I think the movie version of Chicago takes that story and tightens it up in a way and, that and only the film like, version can do. And again, yeah. I feel like it was perfect storm with. Uh, the the um, I'm blanking on his name. Rob Marshall, the director. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Director, yep. Um, yep. Catherine Zeta Jones, um, Richard Gere, um, Weger. Yeah, Maria Zellweger is great in it. And I was like, why is she in a musical? And I was like, oh, because she's Roxy Hart. Um, John yeah. C. Riley is heartbreaking in this movie. Again, hey, we still got Christine Baranski in the bracket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, listen, I totally get Chicago. It's great. Um, and it's it's amazing. And again, I think it, it you know, with like a Moulin Rouge, I think it really kind of helped um, revitalize the movie musical genre. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So that brings us to our last uh, final four uh, decision, Little Shop versus Wizard of Oz. And I want to start with Bob this time. Oh, God. (laughs) Um, (laughs) What do I like more? Little Shop of Horrors. Yes. What's a what's a bigger, you know, bigger deal? I guess Wizard of Oz. Right. What's Mm -hmm. more well known? What's more? um uh, more popular, more, more in the, in the cultural zeitgeist, however you want to say it. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of people who I will say, oh, I'll talk to about Little Shop of Horrors and they'll be like, oh, I've never seen that. Oh, that's, that's a thing. I've never seen that movie before. I think those of us who love it, love it and are very close with it. Um, but I think that, ugh, am I really going to do this right now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that the Wizard of Oz I love The Wizard of Oz, too. I mean, I think I would watch Little Shop more often, um, but I think that I appreciate The Wizard of Oz for what it is, for being the movie musical that it is, for being just the phenomenon that it has been since 1939, and they still want to air it on television, and kids still want to sit down and watch it. Um, It's kind of incredible in that it still holds up to audiences today um, because it's there's just so much fantasy and fun and color and really fun music to listen to. Um, and um, not that Little Shop doesn't have those things because it has all of those things in spades, but um, oh God, I did it. I went with Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't in my bracket originally, but I just kind of changed. So, All right. Kate, your decision. Uh, I also have to give it to Wizard of Oz. I think it is as, again, in my mind, it just feels like a great American film, right? But it is the music. It is a musical. The music is integral to the story. Um, to its charm, to its power. And I think it, as a narrative, it is more successful. It is more satisfying. Like I said, the end of Little Shop of Horrors that is in the movie version is not what the stage ending is. It's not what the alternate ending that Frank Oz shows to people and everyone was like, we can't see them die. It's too awful. Like, And it is because it's so charming. But then the story feels, it, it feels somewhat rushed and incomplete. Um, and... And I think that ultimately is what kind of keeps it very culty. We did not even talk about Steve Martin and being a oh, dentist, know, which right? is just incredible. Incredible. So good. Bill Murray cameo. Come on. Yes. Uh, yeah. One day I will start in a community theater production as Oren Scribillo <laughs> to TBS. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's still, and I mean, I think there's something special about Little Shop of Horrors too, as a movie musical made of a stage musical made of a movie right like it's mm-hmm. crazy roger corman b movie that 
the satisfaction of the B movie that made them want to make the musical is the sort of sick, twisted ending that is nonetheless the moral, you know, the satisfying ending. Um, and so I feel like that the film, the musical film, there's there's just something really interesting to tease out there and what musical narrative allows for um, and what audiences want, right? So all that to say, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> I, 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 I think what I most appreciated about Kate's argument is that it was basically for <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors, and then she voted yes. for Wizard of Oz until it wasn't. Until it, um, wasn't. it wasn't, you know. And 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 it was and that I, twist ending that was also unsatisfying, right? Go yes. ahead, Dan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and I and, and again, I feel like we're at like listen, the Wizard of Oz is amazing, um, and you know, uh, uh, it, it it has it it. it it has stood the test of time and it's amazing. Um, and I, but similar to a sound of music, I feel like we're kind of advancing it because it's the wizard of Oz um, and people love it. And it, it, I love it. It's great. Um, I haven't seen it in a long time because I, I don't have a desire to really see it anymore. Um, Little shop of horrors. I would put on any time of day. Um, and if uh, you know, they are completely different movie musicals. Um, if I had to put them side by side for their merits and their storytelling and uh, the the tightness of everything, I I mean, I would I would go with Little Shop. Um, you know, I, yes, I am disappointed that the original ending is not in it, um, but I don't know. It's just. It, it we deal with classism we deal with uh domestic mm. abuse um and alien plants so <laughs> you know <laughs> we cover a lot of social topics um the, the music is is killer um and i just i yeah I, I'm, I'm giving it to little shop so this is i think the hardest decision in the bracket and um yes this is I, also which, very difficult yeah um, because I think they're both really great and I think completely different ways. Um, they both have Hollywood magic in them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Wizard of Oz, I still will maintain that watching it even, what, 70 years later? Is it more than that now? I think it... Almost uh, 80? Math, I don't know. I know, math is hard. Um, <laughs> even watching it now, I'm like, how the hell did they do that? Like back mm -hmm. in the 1930s. Oh, yeah. And you... There's a reason this has never been remade because you cannot make it better than it is. It was made perfectly in 1939. No special effects are going to make that better. They did try to do that with that uh, Oz the Great and Terrible or whatever Ugh, it was movie. Do not speak of it. Do not speak and, of it. Like, you want to talk about special effects. <laughs> not special effects. Um, <laughs> um, Epic burn. <laughs> seriously. It was, like, in my opinion, like the they did it so well all that long time ago i have to appreciate that level of artistry mm -hmm. and to me that's true movie magic that's not to say little shop doesn't have that too because audrey is a, a a fully functioning character in and of itself and that's no small bit of uh prestidigitation either uh i think the issue here is little shop is something of a cult classic still mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I think it's kind of been referenced. Like I know a lot of people have never seen it. Fun fact: I had never seen the movie version of this until last year. What? I knew all the, yeah, Whoa. I knew all of the songs. I knew the music. <laughs> that is not it, but I'd never actually seen the movie. I was talking I, about you when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it as soon as I saw it. I said, "My God, this is a great it's movie musical." Really, really good there's like moranis is really good in it and it's a bummer that like when you listen to the cast recording it's not his voice because apparently there's a rights issue there it's someone else singing it oh yeah he's not the one on the cast recording ellen green is ellen green right wow. she's just mm -hmm. really peerless, incredible peerless. and i think there like there's so much to love about it but i feel as though pushing it to the front over wizard of oz is almost I don't want to say disrespectful. It's a it's a movie that I love, but I revere The Wizard of Oz. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And that's why I think I'm coming down on Wizard of Oz here. So where does that leave us? Kate, your little shop. Do I have two other Wizard no, of Oz? No, no, I was Wizard, remember? Oh, you I was went like, with Wizard too? I went with Wizard, yeah. <laughs> it's Kate and Bob who are Wizard, and Dan, you're... you're I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm the lone one here. Justice for puppets. Yes, <laughs> justice for pods. Um, it, well, you think that I'm a slob. 
which I am. So uh, with that, we are going to move Wizard of Oz into our final two. So it's Chicago versus Wizard of Oz. And I'm going to go around the horn. Kate Reculia, which one is winning? Uh, Ask someone else. (laughs) (laughs) Bob, do you have a pick? I have a pick. And the pick is Chicago. (laughs) All right. So can you check your notes? Which one of these films has Meryl Streep? Um, <laughs> neither of them. <laughs> All right. So you're a vote for Chicago. Dan, but we got Baranski. We got Baranski, which is almost as good. <laughs> and? Um, I, b- between these two, I have to go with The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Kate. Okay. So... In trying to determine the best movie musical of all time, you do want to to get some pick that feels um, as sort of broadly representative of like a American pop cultural landscape. And like, it's hard to say that The Wizard of Oz doesn't belong with that title. But again, I keep coming back to this feeling of like, I don't think of it as a musical the way I think of Chicago as a musical. Um, and that's just because I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's because like Chicago is a film adaptation of a stage show in a way that the wizard of Oz, the film is not. I was right? just about to suggest that. And, and you know, and that you can kind of make an argument on either side. Also oh, does the wizard of Oz count more as a movie musical? Cause that's what it was. Oh, God damn it. Now I'm arguing for that. <sighs> I will say for me, I'm going with the wizard of Oz. I actually think I'm going with Chicago here. It's the one that I have to do. <laughs> I, I, I honestly do think I, I would go that way. And here's why what my, my argument is. And it's not just to be a dick and do the last minute change. Um, I, I was talking about the, the movie Magic that is in The Wizard of Oz, which is undeniable. Chicago is magic. Mm-hmm. Everything mm-hmm. is right. It is dazzling. It has terrific songs terrific musical numbers you cannot take your eyes off of that from the second it starts it's sexy it's dirty it's uh but it's dirty and yet it still gleams right mm-hmm. do you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. you know, it, sh- it shows you every single thing that a movie musical can do and it does it impeccably yeah and also there's no um no one's trying it's yes. all effortless in that movie and it's just like they walked on stage and they're just like We've got this. And they did. And they nailed it. I wouldn't change a thing about that movie. And I just think there is something about it that captures both movie magic and Broadway magic mm-hmm. in a way that The Wizard mm-hmm. of Oz doesn't. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. yep, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. I, I made the argument that, you know, love, revere with Wizard of Oz. But at this point, Chicago has been around for almost 20, 20 years. 20 years, yeah. And yeah. I think I revere like- Chicago as a movie musical and this is certainly is a modern movie musical. Nothing touches it. I think I have almost the same level of reverence that I do for The Wizard of Oz. And if we're talking about which one I think – you were saying it needs to be you know, um, emblematic of American pop culture, and I agree with that. But I think Chicago is equally as emblematic yeah. of American pop culture. Yeah. And, and, but, and, and also – as like kind of a, a historical story, right? About an American city, about crime, <laughs> <laughs> and and about, show and show business, <laughs> and women killing terrible men, which I am always going to be a, a fan of. Uh, no, you're. I'm, I'm coming back around. I'm I'm back on Team Chicago because you're right. It's that Broadway, and I think that's what it is. It's like you can feel the Broadway on Chicago. Um, even while you also are not like, God, I wish I was watching this on a stage, which is how I feel when I watch Phantom of the Opera, the music, the movie, which like I'm not saying Mm -hmm. it is not a pleasant experience, but why is Patrick Wilson's hair so awful? (laughs) (laughs) There's there's a, there's just, it's an energy. It's a buzz. It's electric, right? It just keeps you, it keeps, yeah. Crackling. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's fussy. It is. Fussy, fussy, fussy. I don't want it to end. Like that's the thing about Chicago. I want to keep watching it. I, and, I mean, that. you have to say the dancing in Chicago is a sight better than the dancing in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I mean, it's completely I mean, different like, yeah. standards, right? Yeah. But it's just, they're so good. And I realize that people are probably listening to them, like, you are straight tripping boo. Like, <laughs> we have an honest to God American classic versus a movie that was made 20 years ago. I an honest to God American classic against think, an honest to God American classic. Yeah. That would be my opinion on it. I think but. I think so. I think just because it's modern doesn't mean it's bad, which is going to take us full circle to the argument that we were making in part one about like 16 out of the top 32 movie musicals being from the 2000s is mm-hmm. madness. 
But that doesn't mean that there have not been incredible movie musicals yep. made in the 2000s. And this is right. by far, I think, the best. Yeah, I feel good about it. I feel good about it. So, I do. Dan, where are you? Let, listen, uh, you have made some excellent arguments. And I'm I'm going to move to Team Chicago. Because, you know, really, now, the points you've made in thinking about it, it I, for when that movie came out 20 years ago, it, it had that buzz about it when it came out because it was like what the hell is this um you know i i remember being in college when it came out and everyone everybody i knew was like oh we can't wait to go home for christmas because chicago is coming out and we get to see it you know and it's about a really insane time in american history hello look around you <laughs> yeah and, I mean, and 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 the stories within it are based on actual crimes that happened and how women got out of it um so yeah, I mean, it tells an important story, and it, I mean, it is a gorgeous movie. Mm-hmm. It is. And, it's, and it it's, has – oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say it's sexy, but it's also women with agency. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. the cell block tangle is a, is a fa- – tango, excuse me, is a fantastic sequence. And it's all it's, – it's kind of titillating in the way that they're dressed, but it's about women murdering men. And <laughs> that's great. That's great, America. That's the America I want to live in. We need more of that. Yeah. <laughs> Kill him. But it's also, in the way I was talking before, like a musical, because of it's this really heightened form, right? It needs, and built on this kind of shared delusional artifice of like, yes, I believe in this reality where people are all just going to sing and dance together. It has to have some kind of gravity or weight to it. And like, and Chicago's mm-hmm. about injustice, right? Like show business. Yeah warping justice mm-hmm. like poor right. ah, ah. like <laughs> the only person who dies mm-hmm. is the one innocent woman yeah. um mm-hmm. yeah it's guilty <laughs> kate, kate, kate i think i think you're right too when you say like chicago identifies itself as a musical right right it's its identity is i'm this musical whereas mm-hmm. the wizard of oz has some great songs that we're singing and it's part of the plot but like it's not like Hey, look at me! I'm a musical. Right, right. right. Like yes, yeah, yeah. Now, I don't automatically think of The Wizard of Oz as a movie musical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it is a classic. Yeah, because the, the, yeah. the scenes are much longer than mm-hmm. any of the musical sequences. I mean, maybe yeah. not The Munchkin Land because that is huge, but. I think- yeah, mm-hmm. it's not like, oh, I'm going to tell this story through song. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it, it it's just different. Yeah, I think it kind of, I think Mary Poppins, when we talked earlier, like falls into that same mm-hmm. bucket too. It's like, it's not really an identity as a movie musical. It does have m- music in it, right? But yes. Yeah. 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 Again, yeah. Chicago same, is I, a musical, as you put it at the beginning of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bob, where are you? Oh, I'm still with Chicago. Catherine Zeta-Jones fucking nailed it. (laughs) Dan? I'm Chicago. Yeah. And Kate, I simply cannot do it alone. Team Chicago. Chicago. Oh, yeah. We (laughs) did it. We (laughs) did it. And there you have it, folks. Our pick for the best movie musical of all time is 2002 Chicago. Do you agree with our decisions? Or do you think we've just gotten away with murder? Find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube and drop a comment with your thoughts. Better yet, head to greatpopculturedebate.com and tell us what you think. And while you're there, check out the other episodes we've recorded. See if there are any polls that are open for your votes and weigh in on which future topics we should take on next. If you enjoyed this podcast, please make sure you hit subscribe and consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. And if you really like us, please become a subscriber on Patreon or Pod Hero, as that allows us to keep doing what we're doing. I want to thank my panelists for joining me today. You're always main cast to me, never the chorus. And thank you for listening to the great pop culture debate. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, everyone is entitled to their wrong opinions. Now let's all do the time warp again. <laughs> <laughs>